Now it's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into the biggest news stories in the spotlight right now. In his final New Year's address as South Korea's leader on Monday, President Moon Jae-in told the country that, despite his administration's best efforts, Seoul has a way to go to get into Korean relations back on track. North of the border, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un last week barely mentioned South Korea or the United States in his year-end speech, instead turning inward to focus on internal issues. Chinese President Xi Jinping used his address to pledge his determination to fix the country's economic issues. But outside of making a number of references to Hong Kong and Taiwan, his focus seemed more on domestic issues. U.S. President Joe Biden had something to say as well. And U.S. President Joe Biden, in a pre-recorded New Year's message, vowed to ensure the U.S. overcomes the pandemic and turn the American economy around. For a breakdown of these respective messages, we are joined by Professor Ramon Pacheco Pardo uh, from the International Relations at King's College London. Good morning, Professor. Hello, good morning. So um, let's start with President Moon Jae-in's address. Do you assess his remarks as uh, on North Korea? And how do you assess his remarks on North Korea? And do you foresee any positive steps forward um, in regards to inter-Korean relations in the final few months of President Moon's term? Well, I think it has been his uh, long-term uh, policy. Since he took office, he said he wanted to create the foundations uh, for inter-Korean relations to move ahead on a sustainable basis. Uh, clearly, it, it hasn't happened. And I think it is unlikely that there will be much change uh, over the next uh, two or three months, primarily because North Korea is clearly focusing on domestic issues. Having said that, uh, at the very least, he can continue to try for the next president to pick up on uh, his efforts. And I think that this is what he might be trying to do not necessarily to improve relations with North Korea, it might be too late to do this, but for the next president to continue down the same path. Now, turning to North Korea, uh, Kim Jong-un normally makes some kind of mention to South Korea and the US, but for whatever reason, he didn't do that this year. Uh, why do you think he chose to gloss over Seoul and Washington in his year and address this time around? It seems to me that the, with the COVID-19 pandemic and the poor economic situation in, in North Korea, there has been this shift uh, in North Korean policy uh, towards uh, focusing on domestic issues until the worst of the pandemic uh, is over. It seems that we're turning a, a corner at the uh, global level but North Korea hasn't even started the vaccination campaign. So I think that until North Korea decides to move ahead with reopening its border, uh, when, when Kim Jong-un feels that the situation uh, might be better, it seems that uh, he's going to be focusing on domestic issues and uh, simply not doing much with regards to South Korea or the US, because there are no provocations, uh, Kim Jong-un hasn't engaged any provocations towards any of the two countries, uh, but at the same time, it's not responding to the calls for dialogue coming from South Korea, but also from the Biden administration in the U.S. Now, Professor, um, what about China? Uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping also kind of refrained from mentioning North Korea or the U.S. Um, do you think North Korea slipped down his list of priorities? What, what's your idea on this? I think so. I think so. I think you're right there. I, I think that uh, with the Winter Olympics coming up, uh, of course, the uh, Party Congress coming up, also when we assume that Xi Jinping will, will get a, a third uh, five-year uh, mandate, uh, I think that the focus is really on, on, on domestic issues, uh, making sure that uh, China can continue to manage uh, uh, the pandemic and that it can come out of, of it, can come out of it uh, in a better situation uh, than it has been over the past uh, a couple of years. And I think especially uh, with the Olympics uh, coming up uh, next month uh, already, uh, I think China is really going to focus on making sure that the pandemic is under control by the time all these uh, sports people from other countries uh, start arriving uh, in Beijing uh, for this big event. 
Right, and let's uh, wrap up with President Biden. It didn't have quite the same style as the other leaders. He was there with First Lady uh, Jill Biden, and it was a pre-recorded message. He was mostly focused on domestic issues, didn't really touch on foreign policy or anything like that. Does this su suggest to you that perhaps he is much more focused on internal issues as well, be it the pandemic, we're seeing all record cases daily in the US, uh, inflation, which some experts say might be spiraling out of control there as well, as well as other issues, especially given that 2022 is midterm year? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. We have the elections coming up uh, in the US and of course, uh, President Biden wants to make sure that his party retains control of, 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 of Congress and, and, and the Senate as well, which looks unlikely right now. So I think he has to focus on improving uh, the situation with the pandemic, but also the economic situation. Uh, employment is doing quite well in the US, but as you said, inflation is really spiking up. And I think that uh, until the election, the focus is really going to be on domestic issues. Of course, he will continue to focus on foreign affairs. Uh, China is going to be uh, a very big issue for the U.S. Uh, throughout this uh, year. But I think the attention is going to be mainly on domestic issues. And then depending on the result of the election, we will see whether the president will have uh, more scope to focus on foreign issues or whether he has to start preparing for the next uh, uh, presidential election uh, taking place. Uh, to make sure that he himself or his party, at the very least, retains the presidency. All right, Professor, thank you so much again for your insights. Hope to talk to you again very soon. Thanks for having me.